Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar um, on formatting and keyboard shortcuts in MathCAD Prime. I'm your host, Joe Fernandez, and we're also joined by Trevor Silence, who will be giving the presentation. And we also have Ron Zabilski, a solutions consultant from Tech30. Um, just to let everyone know, um, if you have any uh, recommendations, questions, leave them in the chat box and um, we'll attend to them after uh, the presentation is over. And now I'm going to be passing it over to Ron, and he'll give you a little background of who Tech30 is and what we offer. Thank you, Joe. Uh, just want to encourage everybody uh, who is on the call today to uh, please engage with us. Um, you'll be able to ask the questions and leave comments, as Joe had said, on the sidebar of the GoToWebinar panel. Even if, if you have questions or comments that don't relate to today's specific topic, feel free to ask, and we can address them in a follow-up email or in future webinars. And also, please view us as a conduit to get feedback to the PTC MathCAD product managers and development team. As most of you are aware, MathCAD is more of a niche product within PTC's portfolio. So let's build a community. The features that get the most requests is more likely to be prioritized for future MathCAD releases. So please use this platform as an opportunity to influence the direction of the product development roadmap. We'd also be happy to receive comments, questions by email anytime after this webinar. And um, for those of you that uh, might be able to take advantage of a PTC MathCAD promotion, PTC is offering uh, on purchases of more than two licenses, 20% off of two or more floating MathCAD licenses, and 10% off of two or more locked MathCAD licenses. The purchasing has to be completed before Wednesday, June 26th. But if you are interested, and uh, looking to expand the number of licenses that you are uh, look, uh, using, please uh, get in contact with me and be happy to uh, get you out of quote quickly. Next. So again, uh, as Joe said, I'm Ron Zabilski. I'm a solutions consultant for Tech30. And uh, Tech30 is a value-added uh, reseller of software products. Uh, Tech30 is also a services engineering uh, company. We help uh, engineering companies do engineering. We do this with the tools from PTC and other OEMs to help our customers make the most of their tools through training and engineering services. We strive to get to know you and your business. We're at our best when we can actually expand the business of our customers and build a community by connecting them with those who benefit from networking with each other. Next. Next. There we go. The company was established in 2002. We currently have over 80 employees with more than 50 engineers in the company. Our headquarters are in Mission Viejo, California, but we're distributed around the U.S. to meet the needs of our customers. I'm located in the Boston and Massachusetts area, and Tech30 has small business status as well as four business units. We have the PTC software business unit. We also do 3D printing and additive manufacturing. We have the uh, services group for engineering, as well as uh, a group that sells Siemens software. We can provide a wide range of engineering services, including mechanical and electrical design, static, dynamic, and kinematic analysis, design for manufacturing, assembly, and 3D additive manufacturing, and new PLM implementation, system integrations, and migrations, as well as training for all the above services. Tech30 also provides services in areas of engineering and design where you currently do not have the expertise or need to supplement those of your in-house uh, capabilities. Next. As a PTC value-added reseller, we focus on these software products, mostly from PTC, of course, uh, MathCAD, Creo, Windchill, ThingWorks, and Vuforia. Next. We also have a broad uh, portfolio of 3D printing companies that we represent. You can have a look at these technologies on this page. I won't go into a lot of detail here, but just to keep in mind that we focus on industrial use cases for 3D printing, both in plastics and metals. We help our customers make additive manufacturing become part of their finished product. I'll use that for tooling, fixtures, and jigs. If you have any interest in this area, please contact me afterwards and we can have a conversation about your use cases. Next. So today's webinar is about MathCAD. 
the main reason why you're all here today. Before I pass the presentation over to Trevor, I just want to inform you of the services that Tech30 provides around MapCat. We not only sell the software, but we provide unique value-added services to ensure that our customers make the most of their software purchase. But first, what is the value of MapCat as a software? Well, they are the automation or the reuse of calculations, the collaboration aspect, sharing those calculations and worksheets in an easily understood document, and the natural math, creating calculations that as you would appear on uh, paper so everyone can understand with no coding or development experience required. Next. One of the uh, unique services that Tech30 offers is our conversion services for MathCAD. Customers often see the value of standardizing on such a tool as MathCAD to make it more collaborative and efficient within their organization. This will become more evident as uh, you see Trevor's presentation. However, one of the barriers we see is uh, in adopting a MathCAD is getting the calculations of other formats into MathCAD. We're all busy at our primary jobs, so who has the time to bring legacy Excel files, hand calculation, MATLAB files, or even MathCAD 15 files into MathCAD Prime? That's where Tech30 can come in. You give us your calculations in whatever format they're in, and we'll convert the data for you and hand you back new MathCAD files. We even train your users to use MathCAD to ensure maximum use of the tools. So if this situation describes the state of your engineering calculations, please get in contact with us and let us help you. Next. Well, with, uh, with that, I'm turning the uh, webinar over to Trevor to show you the different methods of uh, formatting and uh, keyboard uh, shortcuts uh, with MathCAD. So with that, it's all yours, uh, Trevor. Thanks, Ron. All right, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about keyboard shortcuts and how to format your documents, your worksheets in MathCAD Prime 5. So keyboard shortcuts, they'll let you use less mouse clicks to perform some common tasks. Uh, you can work these shortcuts into your current process to help streamline that creation of uh, the valuable mathematic doc documentation. Uh, for formatting, you can customize your document formatting to meet uh, either your needs or your company needs. Um, and then when you have a specific format or style that you like, you can, uh, you can create a template from that and then use that for any future documents in order to have like a standard uh, standard worksheet that um, maybe the whole company uses or maybe you just have your own custom standard template. Uh, so some use cases for keyboard shortcuts is saving you time and hassle when documenting mathematical calculations. Um, there's some basic keyboard shortcuts uh, which are shown here. These are just for the general uh, MathCAD software. You can calculate the whole worksheet again using Control F5. Um, majority of the time in MathCAD, the worksheets are calculated automatically. Um, so if for some reason you're having a bunch of errors, you can turn off this automatic calculation. Um, you can calculate certain regions by themselves. And then if you'd like to calculate the whole worksheet, you can hit the Control F5 button there. Um, the functions you'll see, uh, if you hit F2, they'll pop up in this sidebar here on the left-hand side. Uh, so we'll use this a little bit later. Um, you can also add a page break, which is just uh, a little bit of space in your document by hitting Control Enter. And if you hit F1, you do have this Help Center, which pops up. I believe this F1 is a, a common key keyboard shortcut in many of the PTC programs to get that help uh, help document. And then uh, similarly to how you would close a tab in uh, Google, Google, Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox or something, you can hit Control W and close your current uh, worksheet in MathCAD. So those are some general shortcuts. Uh, these are some more specific ones. The shortcuts on this list are specific to regions. So we have area regions, we have Excel components, there are math regions, objects, um, text blocks, text boxes, a lot of different regions that you can place on here. Um, so let's hop into MathCAD and I'll show you, I'll walk through most of these uh, shortcuts and apply them to the, to the worksheet. Let me hop over into MathCAD. So I have this document prepared already. I have some room. Um, I did already add a, an area here. So you can see we have area. Uh, I just added that by hitting Control Shift A. Um, and in this area, we can actually uh, collapse it or expand it as we like to. So that's something cool about areas. Uh, and then within this, I can put whatever I want here. So uh, I can do Control Shift E. 
and then this will add a Excel component. Uh, we've covered this in past webinars, so I won't get too much into the details of each of these components, but I'll just show you guys how to um, how to use them with keyboard shortcuts. You can, the only thing you cannot put in an area is another area, so that's just something to be considerate of. Uh, hitting Control-7 produces a solve block, um, and I can actually uh, add some text here too. So I'll hit Control-T, which will have a text box, which is a little bit different than a text block. A uh, text box is just a box here where a block goes across the whole page. And, and within this, I can then begin writing. So I can say the equation is and then uh, I can hit Control Shift M and add math within a text box. So in this way, I can actually reference uh, an equation, have it actually look like the equation instead of just um, instead of just typing out these numbers. There's no uh, subscripts or exponents in the, the actual text uh, formatting options. So if you do want to add an equation uh, to a text box, it is important to use that Control Shift M. Um, to add an actual math region in here. Uh, I also used, uh, for this little two here, I used a control minus, which provides a literal subscript uh, compared to an index subscript, which I'll show you guys how to do later. And then I also use control plus equal sign here for this conditional equals. Um, in normal use, if, if this math region was not in a text box, this equal sign would uh, do a judgment to see if both sides are equal to each other. If they are, then it would produce a result of zero or, or one. And if they are not equal, it would produce a result of zero, kind of like a logical test. So these are just uh, some, some of the basic regions we have for keyboard shortcuts. Um, it is also possible to add an object in. So you can copy and paste objects into MathCAD, or you can also hit Control Shift O. Um, let me get Control Shift O. And then it'll pop up an actual box here where you can select. Uh, what kind of object you can add one uh, create a new one or you can actually open a, a file and have it added there another way to do this uh, create from file is just to copy and paste in um, from a file or if you need to load a whole file this is another way to do it so let's hop back into our powerpoint um, oh there's also one more thing we also have these horizontal separate and vertical separate functions so let me show you uh, if we do have this on top of something here um, I can use uh, Control F8, F3. Oops. Yeah, Control F8. I have to select two things. So I'll select this one and this one. Control F8 here. And so you can see we did a, a horizontal separate and it, it moves the, the regions away from each other. Um, if they were overlapped again and I have both selected, oops. So this one selected and this one. Then I can do Control F3, and it will do a, a vertical separate. So there's two quick shortcuts if your regions are overlapping. Um, maybe hard to grab them sometimes if they're completely uh, overlapping. And the next one I like to get into is just math shortcuts. So uh, some very common ones are the Greek letters, um, like pi, for example. If you if you press P down, um, and then you hit Control G after that P, it'll produce the the Greek uh, letter corresponding to that. Um, Latin letter. There's also the literal subscript, which we talked about already, which is control plus minus. Um, we'll also get into the infinity sign and, and we'll go through adding these charts and plots and having a, an extra axis into the plot. Um, so you can already see some of these components on the right hand side. Uh, let me hop over into MathCAD and we'll go through these uh, together. So here we have an A. So I'm just going to go through and convert all these to, to Greek letters. Um, you can see it's pretty pretty quick, pretty simple. You just click after that letter um, and hit Control G. If you do click before, it won't do anything. Um, so make sure you click after. And you can also, if you don't, if it's selected, it also won't um, convert anything. So just make sure that all of the characters you want to select it's right after that. Um, you can hit Control Shift and Z, and this will produce a infinity sign infinity symbol. Um, by default, this symbol is labeled as a constant, and it shows up in this green green color. Um, you can actually switch what label it has by hitting Control Q. And as you can see up here in the labels section, uh, I'm hitting Control Q, and it's just cycling through that whole list of labels. Um, let me select it. There we go. So we have a unit, uh, constant, 
function system and then we can go back to our constant here so you do have the option to change any label not just one that's uh, already pre-assigned is any variable or um, letter that you would like to change the label of it, you can do that and so now we'll add some uh, some plotting components some charts um, so for this one I'll just hit control one and this will add a chart component to our document um, and chart components if you're not familiar um, they're a little bit different than regular plots if I were to add a regular plot here with control two uh, you can see it looks a little different and the way you add inputs is also very different um, the chart components can can be uh, made to look very professional, uh, like publishable graphs, whereas these are more just for like a visualization type thing. Uh, you may not want to publish uh, a regular plot here, but a chart component has a lot of options for you to customize um, in order to have a really nice looking chart. Uh, with control three, we have our 3D, uh, 3D graph here, and then our control four is our polar graph. And with any of these graphs, these plots, uh, besides the chart component, we can add a second axis uh, to any of our axes. So, so if we have more than one uh, function that we want to plot here uh, and more than one X axis, we can also add more than one plot to this uh, one chart. And the same applies to any of these. So if I hit shift enter here, then I'll have an extra one. Um, likewise, if I hit shift enter on this polar plot, I'll have a, a second angular axis that shows up as well. All right. Um, so this is some of the math shortcuts we went through. Um, pretty much covered all of these. Uh, for operators, uh, there's a lot of shortcuts here as well, some very useful ones. Inline division can be nice for notation. Um, so this is an example of the inline division uh, right after delta L divides by N series. Um, instead of just having this bar division, you can have inline. Um, there's also a square root shortcut, which is pretty helpful. Um, you can add equation breaks to any operator. Uh, if it's a plus, this uh, little bracket here is an equation break. Uh, I won't get into the circular convolution too much. I haven't seen that used very much. Um, but derivatives are very popular. Integrals, um, adding prime works similarly to a derivative, and we'll show you that in a second. And also summations are, are pretty, uh, pretty cool to do with these shortcuts as well. Let me hop over into MathCAD and do some of these uh, operators. So you see, we do have these two bar divisions here. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna select one of these. Um, so you see it's highlighted blue there and I'll just hit control uh, forward slash and this will convert, it'll change that operator from just a bar division into a, um, a division inline there. And I can also add a line break. So by clicking on this plus, I can hit control shift plus and it'll just uh, insert that line break plus into this equation. Uh, line breaks are useful when you're kind of running out of room in your document, um, so you can use them. You may see it down here. Uh, we have a line break uh, for this plus sign, and I also have a line break here for the, the division si or the multiplication sign. Um, so this may be helpful if you have a long equation like this. Uh, it could expand your page and uh, crowd your uh, crowd your document. So it may be beneficial to, to use those line breaks to give yourself some more room in the horizontal space. As far as square roots go, um, pretty relatively simple. You just hit the number that you'd like to have the root. So if it's a square root, you can use two. Um, I'm going to use a cube root, so I'll do three, and then I'll hit that backslash, and I'll put five here. We'll just evaluate this. It'll give us the result. Uh, the cube root of five is 1.71. Um, so likewise, you, if you want to do a square root, you don't actually need to put a number in front. You can just do um, a square root of four is equal to two there. And so we talked about these, how we have the line breaks for the plus and for the multiplication here. This helps you save room on your document. Um, for summation, you can add that by hitting control shift uh, four or control shift dollar sign. Um, and here we'll need to add a few things uh, in order to get this summation to function. So we'll start at zero and we'll go up to four here. And then uh, we'll have this equation, it'll be C. And in this case, instead of using the literal subscript, which is control minus, I'll use the left bracket. Um, and this puts an index there. Uh, and this will actually map each, uh, each value out to a specific uh, index. And this index will start at N and it'll work its way up as we increase to four. And we'll have x minus one here in our parentheses. 
and then I'll just do a shift six to add that caret or the exponent uh, with our n with our n value there as well. And if I hit control period, this will add a symbolic operator. Um, and the sim symbolic operator will be able to use to evaluate summations. We'll also use them um, to evaluate primes, derivatives, and integrals uh, in this next example down here. Um, but you can see how MathCAD is uh, able to handle these summations relatively easily. Um, we do have uh, our index subscript here, uh, exponent, and then use our symbolic uh, operator in order to evaluate the summation and give us the results. Uh, for the next one, we'll talk a little bit about primes and derivatives. <clears throat> so we have our L of X function mapped out as just L and X. And so if I do L control apostrophe here, I'll add a prime and I can do X here as well. And then um, just using that symbolic operator again, you can see that it produces the derivative of L and X, which is one over X. Um, likewise, I can use the derivative operator here where I do D over DX um, and then I can do LX. And this should produce the same thing if I evaluate it again. And we do see that it uh, produces that one over X. Um, and likewise, uh, in reverse, I could do an integral where I hit control shift I. I don't need any bounds here. I'm just gonna do an indefinite integral. And I'll throw in that uh, prime again, L prime of X, uh, D of X. And then if I do the symbolic operator, we get all the way back to our start of L and X here. Um, the next one I'd like to show you guys is uh, a global variable. So I'm going to define this G as gravity. Um, so to, to actually do a global variable, you'll hit control shift and this uh, tilde, the squiggly line. Um, and then you can just put 9.81 uh, and then we'll do meters per second squared here. Um, and so now we've defined this, this G as uh, 9.81 throughout the whole document. So wherever you are, um, if you use a capital G, it'll it'll uh, evaluate to that 9.81 meters per second squared. So the next thing we'll talk about is uh, adding degrees, as in um, angle degrees. Uh, so what you can do here is you can hit, uh, we'll, we'll add an alpha sign. So I'll do A, uh, control G. And then I'll just add a literal subscript here by hitting control minus. And I'll put one there. And so we have A1, or alpha one, uh, and then we'll use our shift uh, colon here, which is add the definition operator. And with that, I can do 31. And then our, our key code for the degree is alt 0176. And this also applies to any Word documents or, or any, other, uh, any other documents that you're trying to type in. Um, the alt key will actually work for that as well. Uh, and then if we, if we do want to actually subtract these, um, I can add a beta here, beta one using that a little subscript of control minus. And then I'll have a definition here again, where it's alpha, a literal subscript one, minus the 180 degrees. Um, and then we can evaluate it. And you notice that it's giving just a regular number here. Um, you may need to go into your units in this case, and then actually select this degree. Um, and then when we apply that, it does produce the, the, the expected result of a negative one 149 degrees. So these are some operators. These are some more operators um, that we did talk about. We did the global definition here. We also talked about just the regular definition, which is the colon. So to get that one, you just do shift uh, semicolon. Uh, we did talk about the equal to operator, degrees, symbolics. I didn't go over limits, um, but we will cover pro cross product matrices in the next section. So for matrices, these are some, some uh, shortcuts. Um, like I said, there's the matrix index, which if you hit the left bracket after a variable or letter, um, you'll insert that matrix index there. Uh, if you do hit a left bracket without a, a letter in front of it, you'll just start creating your, your uh, a whole, whole new matrix uh, as seen in this uh, keyboard shortcut here. You can hit control M or uh, that left bracket there. Um, there's also ways to just isolate the columns, the rows. Um, you can transpose your matrix. Uh, you can do a norm of the matrix. You can have a, a, a range, which produces a vector. Um, so I'll show you guys how to do that. And then uh, you can actually vectorize your matrix, which is shown here on the right. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that as well.
let me hop back into MathCAD. Uh, and here we can just start messing around with some, some matrices. So um, for our first one, we're just going to define as A. And then I'll use that definition operator again, shift semicolon. Um, and then I just hit that left bracket to produce the matrix. And so uh, my first value will be one, and I can hit shift enter to produce a, a new line. So I'll just do a really simple matrix here. A uh, is equal to one, two, two. Um, so another way to do that is hit control M or that left bracket again. Um, in this case, I'm gonna have B here. And then we're gonna do one again for the first one. And this time, instead of shift enter, I'm gonna hit shift space just to make a, a new row or a new column. Uh, and so I'll hit shift space again to make another new column. So now we have our B matrix is B is equal to one, negative two, two. And so you can actually isolate rows from, from uh, these vectors or matrices. So uh, for A, I can isolate uh, a row and I'll just do the first, uh, the second row. Since I'm at index of zero, my second row corresponds to one. Uh, so I will get the answer two out here. And likewise, for B, uh, we can isolate the column. So in this case, we'll do the second column again, which is the index of uh, one, and we should get negative two out as expected. Um, so we're gonna define a new matrix or a new vector here, which is C, and this will be the cross product. Um, so we can actually add the, the cross product into this. And if you are not sure, um, that cross product value is just gonna be the, the Shortcut is just control eight, which is, um, it may not be apparent to you at, at first, but if you actually look at that eight, there's a, there's a multiplication sign above it. So we can just do that control eight here. It adds a cross product, and then we can have control shift T to have the transpose there. And so when we evaluate that, we get the, the vector eight, zero, uh, negative four. Uh, in this one, I'm gonna use the F2 button, and you see it pops up this little sidebar here. Uh, I'm just gonna search, um, Search in here for augments, and so I know that this uh, augment function, um, this augment function actually combines vectors together. So if we have uh, the a vector, if we have a b transpose vector, and then our c vector here, um, when we evaluate this, we'll actually get a totally new matrix with uh, all the vectors we have together kind of connected. So I'm going to define this matrix as just a, b, c. Uh, so now we have one matrix that has uh, all these vectors that we've created um, in one, one form. And so likewise, I can do, uh, I can also isolate the row for a matrix, not just the vector. So if I want that um, middle row, I just hit ABC, uh, Control Shift R, and then one. And then if I want a column, I can do ABC, Control Shift uh, uh, C, um, and then this would produce a column result. Um, but actually for this one, I just want to show you guys the norm, which is uh, kind of like the magnitude. Uh, so this can be done on a matrix or a vector. And so what you'll do for this one is control shift. And this is the bar above the backslash. And this will produce a, a norm. And you can use a vector or matrix in here, and it'll uh, pro provide a magnitude of that out at the end. Okay, for the next one, we're going to do uh, just a basic dot, dot product. So I'll do ABC times ABC uh, transpose, um, and this will just uh, give us the basic dot product of these two. Um, if we do want to multiply matrices element by element, um, that is possible as well. So I have to do Control Shift uh, six or Control Shift caret, and then it'll produce this little line on top. And from here, we can do um, multiplication again, um, but in this case, it'll actually multiply it. Uh, element by element. So your results will come out uh, like this. So it'll just be one times one, and then uh, two times whatever the transpose is, which I believe is one again. Um, so it's just an element by element multiplication here um, instead of the instead of a whole cross uh, dot product. And for this last part of our example, we're going to go into creation of a, a range vector. Uh, so the way that this works is um, you'll just type a comma here and it'll already populate uh, these dots for you. And so the next number you'll put in is the next step of this vector. So if I want to go up to 10 um, with uh, increasing by integers, I can do one is the first one, and then two would be my second one, and then we'll end at 10. 
And so when I hit enter, it produces a vector, uh, a 10 unit vector here, uh, increasing from one to 10. Um, and so for this one, we can also start at zero and then increase uh, stepwise by 0.1, and our end result will be one here. And this will also produce a 10 unit vector uh, starting at zero and ending at one. Um, and likewise, you can also start from the negative numbers. Uh, sometimes this can trick people up a little bit because um, you may think that it's, uh, it, it's specifically the step, but it's actually um, the step in relation to your first point. So for this, it would actually be point, uh, 0.8 here if I wanted to increase uh, by a step of point 0.2, and then our end result would be one. So when I evaluate this, I get 10 units uh, that goes from negative one to one, increasing at point 0.2 or one fifth of a, of a uh, not number. And so this is a, um, this can trick you, even though I've done a lot of stuff in MathCAD, I can still uh, still mess up sometimes when making these negative vectors. So just be aware that um, the second number is not exactly the step per se, but just the, the next number that's gonna follow your first one here. Okay, so let's hop back into our PowerPoint. And this is all the keyboard shortcuts we have for, for this webinar. Um, we are going to get a little bit into formatting now. So some use, case, use cases for formatting is um, by mastering formatting options, you can really customize the way your worksheets look. I can make it easier to understand these worksheets when you're spreading them across the company or sharing with other people. It's helpful to have uh, good formatting and uh, a nice looking document. So the way where you will find these formatting options is under the document tab. Um, there's a, a lot of options here under this page section, and then we also have some more under the header and footer section here. Um, any, any options you change for your math formatting, uh, if you want them to apply to the whole document, it's good to do them at the start. Um, otherwise, it'll just apply to certain regions or like half the document, wherever you actually change the settings. And the same thing applies to text formatting. Um, and these calculation options will be applied throughout the worksheet whenever you update them. <clears throat> Uh, so another thing you can do after you have that custom uh, customization done, you can actually save that as a as a template, and then you can load this template anytime you want to start working on documents. So let's hop into MathCAD, and I'll show you guys some of these uh, customization options here. So we'll just use a new document. That way we don't mess up any of the existing stuff. Um, and I'm actually going to use a shortcut to close this. I'll do Control-W here. Um, and it's going to ask me if I want to save. I'm not going to save it. And so um, just like you would close a tab in Firefox or Chrome, you can hit Control W and close a tab in uh, MathCAD Prime. So let's get into the formatting here. So uh, here's just the basic document, what it looks like when you open it up. Um, they're, by default, they're letter size. I can change this to legal. Um, I can also change the orientation if I want a landscape or portrait mode. Um, and then I can make these margins narrow if I'd like to. <clears throat> you can also change your grid size um, and you can sh determine whether or not the grid is shown. Um, all these options will actually change the way your document looks. Um, so if you have stuff here already and you're changing these, uh, your whole document may end up looking a lot different. So it's very important uh, and it's a good practice to, to have these set up ahead of time and uh, save yourself from repeating work too much. Um, we also have the option to add headers uh, and footers. And in these, you can have things like a page number here. In the footer, I can add a uh, save date and maybe um, a file file name as well. Uh, and so now whenever I load the document, um, these things will be shown by default. Uh, I can go into text formatting. I can change my font or maybe the the size or color by default. So then when I create a, a text box, um, uh, so if I do control T here, um, you can see my text is brown, whereas on the past one, it was just that default black color. Uh, same with math formatting, you can change things like your, your default color. Um, you can change the decimal showing, scientific, engineering, just how, how precise it is. There's a lot of options here for your math formatting. Uh, so it's good to go through these. Um, we did talk about label styles earlier, and we cycled through them on the math tab. You actually have the option of changing the way the style is displayed. Uh, you can't create a new style, but you can adjust the existing ones. So for example, if I wanted my unit to have a different color, maybe I wanted um, a lighter blue, I can select that instead. 
Uh, likewise, I can add a different color for my function as well. So um, lots of options here on customizing the style. And any changes you make on these map formatting tabs, the text formatting tabs, or the document page and headers and footers, uh, these will be uh, saved when you do go in and save this as a template. Um, so if you save it as a template, you can just do template here. Um, then you'll be able to load that. It also, you see it changes the way that it's displayed here. Uh, and then we can open, um, let me see. We can open uh, from my templates. Um, and then you'll have a template here loaded that you can just uh, pop up and you'll have some customization. I believe it's a different template I saved uh, in a specific, in the specific my template format. Uh, you see I made this back in April, um, but you can also load it from uh, different locations as well. Uh, so with that, I think we've covered everything. So some takeaways are there are many keyboard uh, shortcuts available to make your documentation easier and faster. Uh, when you master these, you won't have to just click through the drop-down menus. You won't have to be navigating tabs. Uh, you can just type and go, basically. Uh, and then from there, you can customize the formatting in order to make that your worksheets easier to read and understand and have an accessible standard for, for all your company or all your worksheet needs. Your, your company or yourself can create and distribute these templates so that all your worksheets are formatted to one standard and you're not having to adjust uh, the way you're looking at things. It'll just make things a little bit uh, more more precise and uh, have a better flow through. And so with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions. Um, that's the end of our webinar. All right, thank you, Trevor. I just want to remind everybody that um, if you have a question, uh, we'll try our best to answer it. You leave it in the, the chat box or the, the question box. And uh, we do have a question from Saeed Hussein. And his question is, are these shortcuts also the same in MathCAD 15? I believe some of them are the same, but I don't think all of them are. I'd have to double check um, and give you a comparison of uh, which ones carry through between MathCAD 15 and MathCAD Prime. But I definitely will check that and we'll follow up in an email. All right, thank you. Um, there's no questions as of right now, but I'm gonna leave it open for a few more seconds. If you guys do have a question, um, I do wanna remind you that um, this webinar will be posted later on today on our YouTube channel in case you wanna go back and look at the different shortcuts and um, run through um, the different exercises. And I put a link to our YouTube in the chat box, so you just go right down to there and uh, click the link and it'll take you straight to our YouTube channel and you can subscribe to get all our MathCAD content. And um, also be sure to follow us on LinkedIn as well and you'll get notified when uh, exclusive MathCAD, Creo, and Windshell content is released. Um, it looks like we do have another question um, from Mark Van Belzer. And his question is, is there a way to have comma deline delineators in numbers? Um, example, thousands or millions. I see. Let me, I, I, I get what you're saying. So instead of having just like the decimal periods here, if you're going to have a comma instead, I haven't seen that. Um, I can double check on that as well and uh, provide follow up in the email. You put a correction, delimiter. Delimiter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think it just means instead of having a, a period here to have a comma instead, which is a common in European formats, I think. Um, I am not sure if that's possible, but I'll double check for you guys and then uh, we'll include that in our follow up email as well. Okay. Are there any additional questions? Okay, um, just to remind you guys, we'll be posting it on YouTube later today, and you'll also get a follow-up email with the recording. Um, please stick around for a few seconds after, and you could uh, actually recommend a topic. This was actually a recommended topic, um, and uh, we developed um, some content off of some of our attendees' um, recommendations, so feel free to leave well, whatever you think we can provide to you and would be helpful. Um, but other than that, thank you for attending and have a great day.